FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. It was on the TV the other day. I even got a, I even got a heat phone call on Jim Talent. One of the people called the heat phone line and said, thank you for having a genius on. I'm serious. <laughs> mm-hmm. they, thought, they thought Jim Talent would, they think you're a genius, buddy. Well, I was very kind of them. I I don't know that I've ever been called that before, so I don't know how to respond. Well, and you know, just be gracious and say thank you to the viewer. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting too. That's the great thing about the TV show is that I doubt, and and you're probably, you you might be interviewed by other TV stations, but uh, the detail that we went into about the foreign policy speech and how we talked about it uh, is not going to be seen anywhere in St. Louis. Uh, on uh, certainly not on St. Louis airwaves, and certainly not on St. Louis television airwaves, and so we have a unique opportunity to reach a completely different audience. And I think in, in with with that TV show, you certainly did. This this person did not seem like it wasn't even necessarily one of these dyed in the wool conservatives or whatever. They were just somebody who really appreciated what you had to say about it and about foreign policy in general and about Trump's speech. So it's good. Well, I mean, I I, I always in enjoy doing it with you and you know there's it's you know we call it a media because it's a bunch of different each one is a medium and different right. people watch different uh, different media so it's good to do a lot of different ones but I, I have to tell you jamie i always have a soft spot for radio because it's so it's so easy to do because generally you have more time that's the problem with tv as you know you just you have to capsulize everything so much because you just don't have the time but you do with yeah. radio. Well, and I know our speech, uh, our conversation was on foreign policy, and you might still want to talk about that. But I want to go back to the speech on the economy, because it reminded me a lot of the old days when people like you and people like GW and others, and even for that matter, uh, now Senator Blunt, were trying to make efforts and to change our economic structure, reducing corporate taxes, redu- changing the tax code, and also even going back to the health care system, which at the time you and Congressman Blunt and other people were pushing for this mobility of uh, health care policies. Oh, yeah. Association health plans, yeah. I think, are, are still the answer, and I'll talk about them whenever anybody brings it up um because I, I just think it's such a it's such a neat uh solution that will really work and all it you know jamie if you look at, at at who who doesn't have health insurance or affordable health insurance under the affordable care act you know who who really wants it and needs it it's people who uh have a high risk condition or chronic condition and and typically they're working i mean if they're retired they're on medicare if 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 they're not working and they're lower income, they can get on Medicaid, which is not great coverage, but that's another issue, right? The, the problem is people who are working, but they work for an employer who didn't provide health insurance or doesn't provide health insurance. And so, and the primary reason they don't is they're small business people. Uh, they have only a small pool of employees, and they're at a competitive disadvantage when they deal with big insurance companies. So if you allow them to pool together nationally, in their trade associations, they can get health insurance on the same terms as big multinational companies, and they will. And that's that's all the bill did was it it, it didn't cost taxpayers anything because it wasn't a government program. It just allows small business people to pool together and buy health insurance, and then and 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 then many will do so who were not doing so, and millions of people get coverage. Right, and and for whatever reason, I mean, I remember talking to you about this 10 years ago, for crying out loud, and you talk about Obamacare, which would have been unnecessary right. had this plan worked out. And not only that, we would have had people who are of middle income, blacks and white, not paying more for the health insurance that they were before under Obamacare. The, the lower income folks are fine because they're getting it essentially for free, but they're only doing so because the middle-income folks are paying more. Right, and I wouldn't say they're fine because the coverage they're getting so bad. Right, that's, yeah. That's a different issue, and one we certainly need to address and can address. But when you're talking about people who are working for small businesses, you know, my brother had a, it was a classic situation. He ran a, as you know, uh, he, he had a tavern for many years, and 
you know, he, he would have loved to get health insurance for his employees. For one thing, he was an employee. He could have gotten it, right? <clears throat> the problem is, you know, he runs the thing. And so he's got to deal with the insurance company. He's got to go through the the complex and difficult and, and, and risky, if he makes a mistake, process. And he has to take whatever it is the insurance companies are willing to give him because he has no competitive power. But if he could join the National Restaurant Association, and become part of a pool of thirty or 40,000 or 50,000 employees. I mean, he, then he's literally in the same situation as Boeing, right? Right. And the one thing, you know, when you say to people, would you rather work for a big company or a small company? It all depends on, you know, the company and their own attitudes and all of that. But one thing, I used to ask this question to groups, you know, which do you think, without knowing anything about it, uh, other than one of them is a big national company and the other is a small business, which do you think is more likely to have the better health insurance? They always thought the big company. So, you know, if, if, if we can do this for the multinationals, and they're regulated under federal law, they're not regulated under state law, they can't be because they're multi-state, right? Right. So it's the same principle, and it would work. I don't know exactly how many people would get covered, but I used to say, why don't we do that and see what happens? See how many people just get good coverage that way. And we would have taken a big slice out of the problem. I still think we could do it. Yeah. Just let it compete with the, with the Obamacare exchanges. I, I have a feeling I know how that's going to end up. Right. You know? Well, I, I I appreciate that. And I, I know we didn't talk foreign policy, but that's because right, we did it on the air. But I did, I did, I know you say that you enjoy being on TV with me, but somebody sent me a recorded conversation of you and them talking. And you were talking about me and. Tell him I think he's a son of a bitch. And you, <laughs> you said that. And I. Didn't appreciate that, but anyway, well, that's just, how you talk. One sob to another. On TV, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't think I flagged that, did you? Did you uh, last time? Well, that's the world of today. Jamie, <laughs> but, uh, All right. You know. It's nothing I haven't said to you personally. Right. <laughs> right. At Jim Talent, always good talking to AEI.org. 